Hey there, it's Brian, Sebastian, Movie Reviews and more, iHeartRadio, all the platforms around the world, IT247 and WomenOnTV.tv. So this is a special show because it's all about health. Now, I've never met Max. My partner, Monty Cooper, and Lamont met him. We like this. Max, tell us who you are, how you started this company, and why sourdough bread is good for you. Because a lot of people don't know this. I definitely didn't know this until about three months ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my name is Max Agabon. I'm the owner and founder. Uh, and uh, I like I like to use those terms relatively loosely. I, I say I'm a self-proclaimed uh, bread enthusiast more than anything. Uh, but uh, sourdough bread, uh, why it's good for you or even why it could be like beneficial versus other breads is uh, the process that it goes through. Like currently in today's kind of landscape, uh, like a lot of the commercially available breads, they more importantly look like bread. Like uh, when companies, when they try to make bread, they try to make it as fast and easiest as possible to make them. Where uh, sourdough in its origin is all about like time and using that to propagate the cultures and the processes that are in bread. Because when you make bread, there's kind of two things that you want. One, you want the fermentation process but also you want this kind of lift that's kind of like uh, propagated by the yeast, essentially like burping and farting uh, the air bubbles that come out. Uh, so like I said in the beginning is also that fermentation process. And what that does is actually make the gluten that is naturally produced in the bread. It actually breaks it down so it's more easy for us to digest them. Uh, but I did skip out uh, the first question you asked was, uh, how did I get kind of started? Uh, and that's kind of a long, more long winded question. So do you want to just get the short version or just kind we'll of like the short version? We'll say the long version for our live show. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, really quickly, uh, my, like when my son was kind of like eating bread, he was born a couple of years ago and, uh, we're, we're a family of bread eaters as I'm sure a lot of families out there and, uh, they're kind of in a weird state cause there's kind of like this attack or this kind of like not positive stance on bread. And we just couldn't see ourselves eating with that, uh, you know, having meals and living without it. And uh, we bought, you know, bread from a really great store where we thought there was going to be a lot of, you know, there is a lot of high quality products there. Uh, but when I was like, hey, you know, we paid a lot for this bread and I looked at it and um, it just wasn't what I thought. There was uh, food coloring in it. There were like, you know, enzymes and other things that I just wouldn't think would be in like the natural process of eating bread or making bread. And I just didn't think we should be eating it long term, even though I don't mind eating it very occasionally, but I wanted to find a more long term solution. And uh, then I started like, trawling the internet going on Reddit forums, I went on like every single bakery in like probably my county and just like went over all the reviews and everything that they had. And I just didn't think it was as uh, not even the because I think some have a natural process, but I think it like starts with like the ingredients, you know, and I just didn't think that it was as natural of a process of the ingredients because you can have like a really great process. But if like inherently those things originally are just not of, you know, the like a clean quality, like that's where I thought we were having like a disconnect, at least culturally. And that's where I felt like committed to ramping up and making it as uh, like natural of an origin of ingredient as possible. And that's kind of how we, you know, ended up with Moonlight Bread. And uh, like our guiding star in philosophy is we just want to be the light in the darkness of everything that oh, is uh, really about like bread. That. I like that. Let me ask you this, because I love having grilled cheese sandwiches. I love peanut butter and jelly. That's like my go-to thing. But at yeah. the same time, I'm like thinking... Oh, I can't keep having bread every day, but I really love those. How do you, what do you do to balance that, especially as you get older? Yeah. So as you get older, you know, there's different processes and I think like everybody's different, right? Like we're human beings and there's all these different processes. So like kind of with our kind of philosophy, we wanted to take like how we source ingredients and the farms that we work with to as natural a process as possible. So kind of like the first like product that or, you know, kind of bread that we ever made was like a brioche bread. 
And uh, one signature aspect of the brioche bread is it's like very yellow, right? And that, and some companies, if you actually look at the ingredients, they add coloring to, I don't want to say deceive is the right word, but they, they want to make you think that there's a lot of really good eggs in there. So we actually started with, and I don't want to make this a whole like kind of talk about eggs, but there's like several different tiers on how eggs are produced. And we wanted to get eggs where it was like, a hundred years ago, where they were just like chickens that were like roaming around and they were living their natural processes possible, like living in almost the wild. And that's where kind of our hallmark was. And we, and once we started making brioche bread with that high quality eggs, we just realized we couldn't have low quality flour. We couldn't have low quality butter. We couldn't have low quality milk. And it kind of like, put me down this rabbit hole to see that how could we make everything as natural a process as possible so that when we eat the bread, our body realizes this is a natural product and we break it down naturally. We're in today's kind of current process for, cause I, I love grilled cheese. I, I got, I don't know if you saw, but I got, you know, excited when you said grilled cheese, cause I'm actually thinking about starting a whole series on just grilled cheese. And I love peanut butter and jelly too. I grow up on those. And I, oh, I was nice. like, yeah, I was like, man, I want to, if I'm going to like, you know, people get like really good, like nut butters today and really good jellies. But like, I felt like the bread is something we're just like dropping the ball on consistently. And that's where we wanted to make it as natural a process as possible. And we've even visited almost all of the farms. Like the only thing we haven't visited yet is uh, the salt factory. I don't know if they'll let us in there. Because uh, even the salt we get is from California. So everything we get is as natural as we can and as local as we can. So we get pasture-raised eggs from California, uh, grass-fed butter, pasture-raised, grass-fed milk in the pasture, raw and filtered honey. All of those are from California. So we want to cut down on the logistics. We want the ethicality of the animals. And uh, we just wanted that to give a really great experience flavor-wise, profiles, even philosophy-wise to anybody that's trying to enjoy a grilled cheese and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So that's how, like, long-term, everybody's going to change and whatnot. It was kind of like twisted, long-winded answer, Brian. But it, we just wanted to go back to nature. So that way, when you get a product that we're trying to produce, and I'm not saying we're the authority on this matter, but we're always going to be trying to find if there's a situation that we want to even advance, uh, you know, later down the line. So family run, family own, important, small business. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, uh, man, uh, I don't even know how to like tackle this one specifically, but when I first wanted to get into this industry, uh, it, it wasn't as like, oh, something like struck me like lightning. Uh, I like uh, my son was born a couple of years ago and I had like, my best year in business, like by far, like several times over. And then when he was born, kind of mixed with like the great financial and career success I had, I knew I wanted to, like, it didn't fulfill me in the way that I wanted my son to, I, I knew that my, the lessons I taught him, he was not going to get, he was just going to feel my zeal and energy for life. And I knew I wanted to kind of direct him, like, you know what, I need to go into like a new direction. And because he's just going to copy that. So I wanted to like reset in a weird way. And it was, this was during the pandemic. So this was like 2020 when he was like already born and we were eating a lot of ramen. And because, uh, <laughs> you know, we were just kind of eating what's available and we didn't want to go like fight in the stores. I'm like, hey, let's just let's see how this plays out. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of ramen and stuff. So there's this like a uh, ramen chef that I really enjoy. His name is Ivan Orkin. And uh, he said this quote that just struck me like lightning. And he said that because uh, he had opened restaurants in like Tokyo and in New York in the States. And he said that, hey, you know what? People don't become your regulars and just go to you time after time just to eat food. They can eat food anywhere, especially here in New York. He was in New York and I'm thinking like I'm in Los Angeles. People can go anywhere to eat food. And he said people continue to go and you know, go to your place because they feel like they're taken care of. And like it was something that just, and it made me think of my grandmother like instantly because she would bake bread for us like almost every other day. 
like without even it was just something that she did. And I remember her watching like food shows before even the Food Network uh, was about and she was constantly writing notes. I can't even say which recipe was really hers because there were so many recipes everywhere that she was writing down from TV. And then I was like, I felt like so taken care of. And that's kind of what led me into that research about like, hey, how are these things being made? And then I thought, what better way to take care of my community than to make something that really is thinking about them first? And then I thought about like, should we even be making bread? You know, because I was reading all these things about gluten free and like people are having all these allergies. And then I watched another show uh, you know, because we're in the pandemic, you know, 2020, and it was like uh, cooked. Um, I think his name was Michael something. And it's about like uh, cooking in general. And he goes over the different elements like air, fire, water, earth. And I remember the one about air uh, and they were talking about bread because like air is really what bread is. If you like squish any loaf of bread, except for the really dense ones, it's like almost 50% more of like air volume. And then he said like, People are just always going to eat bread. And it, and that's where it morphed into me philosophically, where before it was like a business and we're making money, but why do we eat bread? And then I heard him say that if you give somebody flour or grain and water, and they just try to live off of that, they can maybe live a couple of days. But if you transform bread through like the sourdough process and fermentation, they could possibly live indefinitely. And kind of like lightning striking again, kind of like a vein of gold, it, like it further down the vein of gold that I saw, like at least in how it made sense for me to continue to want to move forward. It was this represents humans at their very essence. It shows how we as humans can take a situation where it's dire or not even beneficial for us at all. Like, hey, you know, we could be in the situation that's not. And then through just changing the process and changing something with the ingredients that we already have, it can be something beneficial and provide a sustenance long term for generations, if not forever. And uh, that's when I kind of like saw our vision of we want to be the light on the darkness for when we go to other planets. Like if we were going to now go to other planets, like the moon, Mars, or whatever, we if we could only send one thing from Earth, it would be the philosoph philosophy of how we're making this bread, how we're be growing things. Like bread, wouldn't it? Yeah, I like I <laughs> it like kind of all goes in like how would we send this bread, even if it's not our company? Like how would we grow the crops? How would we uh, take care of the animals that of like, you know, the eggs and the milk and the butter? If we continue to use those, how would we, uh, you know, prepare them? Like, would we prepare them? And that's something that how we kind of went into this business. And that's why we kind of shielded so closely and to just be a mom and pop versus like trying to take it totally commercial and just like trying to make all this money and like, you know, reduce our costs and, you know, maximize our profits. And, uh, and I know it's kind of a long winded way, like around your question, Brian, but that's kind of like how we decided to be like this business, because we wanted to see if it was worthy of like our time and energy, because there's so many bread companies out there, we wanted to make sure it was something that was like worthwhile for our, like to put my family's uh, like my time and energy that I could have devoted to like making more money, like doing what I used to be doing versus like, this is so like valuable as a, like it's worth the time of our family putting into it, that that's why we think it's worth doing. And that's kind of how we're like, Hey, you know, we're committed as a family to continue to do this and why I like, you know, it's worth me taking time away from my, like my son and like, the rest of my family and you know because you know making a business is like crazy and to do something where there's so many bread companies already i'm like it has to be something where like i get this excited even like talking to somebody about it you know and uh like like you said making grilled cheese and all these other things like it, it it's like it all spawns from like that bread not that i don't love cheese i love cheese well, i wish <laughs> i had it now because i want to have as soon as this interview's over and I'm uploading it. I want to have real cheese. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about it now too. Uh, like, I'm uh, like, that's, that's what I want to have. But I am thinking about the bread always because 
people in fitness don't want to use bread. Yeah. However, on their cheat day, it's all about you have whatever you want to have. And yeah. so if I go to a restaurant, what I don't like is I don't like hard bread. I want hot bread. And I want hot, you know, warm butter to put it on. I'm yeah. off by hard bread, cold butter. I'm turned off by it automatically. That tells yeah. me stuff. That's just, that just doesn't work for me. So as you're describing what you're talking about, what you created, I love this. This is this is why I love doing what you're doing. This is what it's all about. Last two questions. Um, where do you normally go so people can come and find where you are at the Farmers Vegas? Which ones do you go to? I mean, what's your favorite movies and what kind of music do you like? Because it's movie reviews and more. Oh, man. Those are really good questions. So, yeah, currently we're just at the Melrose Place Farmers Market. Uh, and you can always uh, order or pre-order on our website, moonlightbread.com. Uh, but we're also in the process of uh, being in another market in, um, uh, in the Woodland Hills uh, Warner Center. Uh, we used to be in three other um, farmers markets, but we pulled back from them because we're uh, about to be on an online distribution delivery channel. So I don't want to say it preemptively. Uh, cause I don't want everybody to go there and then we're not there and, you know, be upset and all that other stuff, but we're also like having online distribution as well very soon. Uh, but man, favorite movies. Uh, well, you know, man, what? I, 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 yeah. because we sit down and we're going to have our sandwich. We want to watch a movie or read a book, right? Yeah. You know, the one that just like comes to my head, uh, like two that come to my mind instantly. One is, uh, Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> and I think one thing I just love about that is, you know, just coming together as a team and kind of utilizing your skills, you know, and it kind of the human aspect that goes all about it and, you know, kind of the entanglements that come. But uh, the other one that has always stuck with me is uh, The Birdcage uh, yeah. with Robin Williams. Yeah. And uh, I think it's always just stuck out as this kind of universal whole for like two people loving each other and everybody working together to make that work, you know, cause I, I don't think there's any shortage of money and there's other things, but when you come down to it, I think there's a, a shortage of people that really like love and care for each other. And when you have that, I think that's why you can see these people really working together to make this work out. And cause you know, like when you see couples and whatnot, you, you, you root for them almost as this weird ideal of like what we want and what we want to see in the world. And and I think somehow that universal theme is, uh, as uh, you know, they explore, there's these taboos of why they shouldn't be together, but, you know, they can just see that it's something like worth kind of fighting for. And you can't get out of here until you give your social media links. Social media links. Oh, you. yeah. So uh, social media, you can find us on uh, on Instagram. You can be at, uh, at Moonlight Bread Co. And on TikTok, I think we're just at Moonlight Bread. And also on Facebook. I think we're just at Moonlight Bread. Oh no, Facebook. I think we're also Moonlight Bread Co. It's so we're the logo with the the cat in the moon. So because I think there's some other Moonlight something. So, so look for us. We're the the cat on the on the moon. Uh, the waning, no, the waxing crescent is the shape of the moon. Okay. All right. So Max, I want to thank you for coming on Movie Book Reason More. This will not be your last time. But <laughs> So I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More. So I want to thank you for coming out and giving us a little history of why bread is good for you. Sourdough bread, moonlight bread, you know, that's very important. All right. So I always say this. Good night tonight. Better day tomorrow. If you see someone out with a smile, please give me one of yours because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. We will talk to you next week. 